We have all felt the strange sensation that someone might be watching us from the dark corners of a room. That something might be lurking within the shadows, cloaked underneath the wraps of the darkness. Who are we, honestly, to say that these are simply figments of our imaginations, like our parents say? Tonight, I wish to share with you my own stories involving the darkness, so you may consider checking if your own is really as imaginative as you painted out to be. Turn off your lights, close your eyes, and listen to the whispers in the dark. I want to tell you all a story that occurs within the premises of what you may call a home or safe spaces, if you will. There is nothing that compares to the safety granted by your own home. Be it after a long stay at work or school, your home is where you can be liberated from all of your anxieties, and likewise, it is where you are most vulnerable. The story is from when I was about 10 or 11 years old. It was in our old house, and this was the place where I grew up until I was um, in fifth grade, I think. We moved, thankfully, as it was prone to flooding whenever the rain decided to pour harder than usual. And it was night time. Um, I woke up with the strong urge to pee. And I believe that it's important to paint out the image of what our house was like before we continue. Well, as you can imagine, it was old. Its floorboards creaking whenever someone would walk past. And as you can imagine, this was also not fun. As a child, we had a staircase. Um, this allowed your head to meet with the feet walking on the second floor. So there was an open balcony that overlooked the stairs. And on the second floor, there was a room which served as our storage area. There were a ton of antiques there, from an old cabinet that was probably older than my parents to bags that had no other purpose than to collect dust. As a kid, I was terrified of this room. I had no reason to enter the room, really, unless I had chores to do that involved heading in there, and even then I would bolt out the room as I had no intention of staying. It had a strange vibe to it, as if it, it would get angry or impatient when you lingered inside. This is important as going back to the story, I was making my way to the bathroom found on the first floor. I didn't like the idea of heading downstairs. I was easily scared as a kid. However, as I couldn't hold in the urge any longer, I decided to run down, trying my best not to trip within the darkness that engulfed the stairs. I got to the bathroom okay, turning on the lights and I keep the door open, which, looking back, was probably not the best idea as the living room outside was nothing but pitch black. After finishing my business, I slowly make my way outside and that was when everything started to feel weird. I mean, oh god. Recording this right now, everything just feels really cold. Um, yeah, the air immediately changed upon setting my foot outside the comfort room. It was cold, freezing cold. Even as a kid, I knew that something wasn't right. So I make my way in the dark once again, going slow as I didn't want to trip. A few steps later, that was when I saw it out of the corner of my eye. Feet zooming past my head as it leveled with the floor of the balcony. There were no footsteps, as if it was floating past me. Oh god. The hairs on my body were now up and I sprinted to my room. I immediately tucked myself under the sheets, cold from the unexplainable encounter. Looking back, I realized that she, or whatever that was, was heading towards the room I told you about in the beginning. I just knew it was a woman. Nothing was the same after that night. For the next few weeks, I would wake up with a nosebleed at 3am and the creaking of the floorboards grew louder with each night that passed. Maybe there was something about that room. Something that did not want to be disturbed. And sometimes, if you look close enough, you could see that someone standing in the shadows, waiting and watching. <laughs>